Hey everybody, here's a quick little video on this unusual uh, brown and sharp micrometer that I picked up uh, cheap uh, because it's completely frozen and uh, basically the things of no use to me or anybody else in the condition it's in. I could either sell it as is to somebody. My fear is if it's unsalvageable then I really don't feel like I don't feel like selling it to somebody as a repairable and then they find out that it's completely junk. So I'm just going to roll the dice, possibly end up destroying it in the process, but I'm not going to be out a ton of money on this thing. I paid 10 bucks for this micrometer with the case. In case anybody uh, is curious how this comes apart, this outer um, part with the window right here just unscrews. Then there's a set screw right here, um, an Allen set screw. When you loosen that set screw, that allows you to actually rotate this whole mechanism here, uh, this part right here. The graduated dial, I mean. Okay, so I think this is how you would maybe zero this. Um, but it also allows you to slide this right off. Once you slide this off, there's this plastic sleeve right here. The plastic sleeve um, is interesting. It has a hole right here, which would indicate that maybe you can put a um, micrometer wrench in there and actually rotate this to change its position. Okay, I'm not sure, but it's just press fit onto this barrel. And of course, it probably goes without saying that you want the number one facing closest to the uh, body of the micrometer. That's more for a reminder to myself. So the problem is this part right here is not rotating at all. I tried having this vertical like this, holding it up like this, and letting oil sit in there for two days to see if the oil would work its way down inside there and break it free, and nothing's happened. Of course, the problem is you really can't grab onto this um, with any uh, with anything to really get any force. It's, it's hardened. All right, so there's a sleeve right here, or a collar, that uh, has two grooves in it, so that sure looks to me like that's designed to unscrew and it is turning all right that's coming off fairly easily just unscrewing that collar is actually allowing me to now turn this a little bit it turns a little bit and then it stops get some of this oil off of here since it didn't do any well, actually, since I was about to say since it didn't do any good, but for all I know, maybe that's why this is moving now. All right, so this is a one to two inch, and we're pretty close to the one inch side, so I need to, this needs to actually be able to come out a lot more. What it's not doing right now. Oddly enough, it only seems to want to go in. All right, I'm going to get some pliers. I'm just going to use this rag so that I can not mar up the surface of this rod but grab it enough so that I can rotate it. There we go. Alright. Now we're cooking. Alright, that's freeing up. And that whole spindle now is unscrewing from So now, this is moving perfectly free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this and take this all the way out again. And I'm just going to put a drop of machine oil, light oil on the threads. I don't want to put much on there because I don't want it to be leaking out, making a mess. There we go. So that quieted, that took the little scraping noise that was a present as I would turn this it pretty much took that out of the equation okay so now let's see what happens when we reassemble it so the first thing that has to happen is this collar has to go back on next up this sleeve now let's see I'm a lefty but let's assume for a minute that I'm a righty. I'm going to be holding this micrometer like this. So I want 
that scale facing out this way. Pretty much like so. Next up, this mechanism. So I grabbed the one inch standard, I also grabbed the two inch standard. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try setting this using the one inch standard. I'll check it when I go up to two inches and see what kind of results I get. Take this off so I can bring this down. I think what I want to do is I want to bring, I want to rotate this barrel so that it's at uh, all the zeros. How do I do that? See, that's zero, two. How do I get zero, zero? Oh, hold on. If I take this plastic piece off, that's where I get zero, one. So the difficulty I'm running into right now is I can't get a zero zero to show in this window. I think maybe by loosening this brass ring right here, I can actually reset that to zero zero. Hey, this is weird, but I just spun this thing fast, spun, 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 and eventually I was able to get zero zero to come up. How weird is that? All right, well, I'm back at the uh, Brown and Sharp micrometer. I'm just about ready to give up on it. Um, looks like it's going to be another micrometer repair fail for me. So I'm 0 for 3 on micrometer repair. <laughs> this one, although this one I really don't think it's my fault. I don't think I've actually butchered anything or made anything worse. Um... The way it stands right now is the uh, the spindle still moves freely, uh, and what I discovered, and one thing I did make slightly worse was this little cone-shaped plastic piece. Um, I didn't even realize it until I looked at it under magnification. But when this was on, uh, this had a split in it like that, and I could see the graduations through it. And I actually thought that by design this was supposed to be a split ring. And then when I looked at it under magnification, I could see, no, it actually was a crack. Because there were these other little small radial cracks on the back side. And that's what made me look at this even closer. And what I realized was that because this was cracked, it was actually not in the correct position here. This has a... Um, actually has a tooth on the inside so it's got like a ring gear molded into the plastic that engages these teeth on this part right here all right and because that doesn't stay in position correctly and mesh correctly that causes some sort of a problem that I don't quite understand exactly how but it's when what happens is when you have this on here screwed on and you start torquing down on it when you tighten it down it kind of like almost locks up um so see if i close that like that you can see the crack is almost completely gone that's how it should be ironically though when you do that the other side is still split so i'm not sure exactly how that's supposed to all fit on there well i guess it does close down for the most part it's supposed to stay on there like that, but it can't because of the fact that it's damaged. It's cracked. It splits. So, it's very hard to get this thing to, uh, to work correctly, if at all, with this broken. And in fact, I did get kind of close at one point, but then the problem is I don't have the alignment right. So what happens is if I... Um, if I go to the one inch uh, standard, this isn't on zero. And that other column, the left hand digit, still is not working the way it should. 
So I'm not sure if there's also an additional problem in there related to that um, or if that's something uh, different altogether going on. So unfortunately, this is going to be a bust. This is going to be, I think, a parts or repair micrometer. Somebody would have to have another one of these to actually get this piece from, to actually be able to do anything with this. But there's got to be a way where you can actually get this to zero and to get these count these digits to count the way they're supposed to count. And I haven't been able to get it to do it. And I just, you know, it's just not worth it for me to continue to waste time. So we're just going to take this puppy, uh, sell it as is for parts or repair. Oh, well, it's too bad. I wasn't going to keep it anyways. Oh, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's a Sunday morning and... Um, this video on this micrometer was kind of short anyways, and um, it's been about a week since I messed around with this micrometer. I put it online and was trying to sell it as is. Um, I think I was asking 20 bucks for it, and I had no takers for quite a while. And I just kept thinking about this micrometer, and it was bothering me. And since I didn't really have any interest in it uh, from anybody to purchase it for the 20 I was leaning back towards the idea of maybe taking another stab at this thing so that's what I'm gonna do this morning I did get contacted just within the last day or so from somebody who said that they might be interested in this as well as any other basket case micrometers I think was the way they described it that I might have um, because they just like taking them apart and messing with them. But they wanted a package deal, so, I mean, I could do that, but I figured, hey, if I make an attempt here and it doesn't work out, I can just explain to them, this is what I tried, this is what I know, and if you're still interested, I'll sell it to them for the 10 bucks I paid for it with the case, and got these basket case micrometers here that in a video a while back I showed where I tried to do something with these two micrometers where they're just they're just like crazy locked up and how I ended up going through all this trouble to unlock them only to have them <laughs> basically lock up again this one uh, this one I could turn this is the brown and sharp, but it's way too stiff. It's acting like it's locked when it's not. This one uh, is a Sterrett that is just, <laughs> it's locked up. So, all right. So one of the things I thought about with this micrometer was um, this collar right here. I've been, br I've been blaming the fact that this counter does not work on this collar being cracked in half, which I can take it off now because I completely cracked it in half in two. So my first thought was, well, wait a minute. Why can't I just glue this collar back together? Solve that problem. I mean, there's not a lot of glue surface there, so I'd have to use, you know, a super glue type product or Gorilla Glue maybe, making sure that I stay away from the, the areas where the teeth are on this ring. So we got this little ring inside here that I got to be careful about. But the other thing I thought about, the more I thought about it, was that I think the purpose of this plastic collar with this ring gear is actually just to give this a sort of a uh, friction ratcheting stop type quality to the, to the micrometer. In other words, when you're rotating this barrel, okay, when you close down on whatever you want to measure, what happens is, I think by design, when you turn this, so the idea is that I think when you close down on something, this will start to, these teeth will start to slip inside these plastic teeth and give you that ratcheting click, click, click. Even though there also seems to be a built-in friction ability here because of this. So, still not clear on the operation of this thing. All right, so I just loosened this screw. So this comes off like this. All right, so if I'm gonna unlock the mysteries of this mechanism right here, 
I think I have to unscrew this outer brass ring because there's two tabs right here, locking tabs, or uh, there's two grooves for a wrench to get into. The type of wrench that I need is probably this type of wrench right here, but this one is too small. So I'm going to try and see if I can't get this with one of these other micrometer wrenches. Well, as luck would have it, that wasn't very tight at all. This appears to be stuck. There we go. So I'm looking down inside this cylinder here and the plastic at the very end looks all wavy and distorted. Watch as I rotate it around. Look at right there, you see that? I mean, could that be by design? That just looks so randomly out of whack. But looking down from this side in there, which should be the back side of that same area, it looks perfectly normal. So if we look down inside this side, it looks perfectly normal. Okay, there's no distortion. Well, what the heck purpose could that have? Oh, maybe it's a little ramp. And maybe the way these things are designed, they actually get turned as they go up, you know, around that ramp. Oops. Oh, that's interesting. That's just a little clip that just comes out. That's not broken by the looks of it. That's by design that that's just a half of a circle ring. If we want to set this so it's at the correct starting point, then what we need to do is we need to set these all, I would think we would set these all to zero. But the problem is, actually, this little wheel right here that's next to the zero right now doesn't have a zero. It goes nine, seven, five, three, one, nine. How do you like that? All the odd numbers. And the one next to it is, well, of course, zero, eight, six, four, two. All the even numbers. The first ten are even numbered with zero. And the other, and the other ten are the odd numbers. How weird is that? Just the act of putting this in is making that want to rotate over to a two. You behave. Get back over there. All right. So I got zero zero. One thousandths, two thousandths. Problem. <laughs> Say, let's pretend that didn't rotate and it was still a, a zero. Three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine. Yeah, no. Ten. Yeah, so this is still. This is still obviously got some issues here. So this thing just isn't going to count correctly. Oh, wait a minute. If I push pressure on this, it does. I think something is happening there. All right, so I've given this some thought, and it appears to me that what's supposed to make these little left-hand digits rotate so that they count is that these are supposed to kind of ride along the inside of this edge here, and when they hit that distorted area, that that actually, what that distorted area is, it's almost like a, uh, it's almost like a bobsled track that's going into a bank the way that it's designed there's a def definite ridge there so depending on which direction it's being rotated these these little um, cubes will either be flipped that way or that way depending on which way they ride across that and what's happening right now is it seems to me anyways that when this is screwed all the way in, which I can't screw it in any further because of the flange, that 
that is not really riding up against that disc. It's almost as if that disc should be in further. Looking into this part, I don't know. That disc almost looks like it's an integral part of this plastic piece. That this may have been molded all as one piece. I don't see any way that that can be moved. So if I can't move that piece further in towards this face, I'm wondering whether or not it's a matter of moving this whole thing out because I'm noticing that these apparently are writing on a brass hub right here that is threaded onto this shaft. If I were to take, if I had the proper tool, I would engage these four uh, little slots with the proper tool and I believe if I were to back this out that would unscrew this whole assembly and make this whole assembly come out this way a little bit further so what I'm gonna do is because I need to really hold on to this I'm gonna put this in the vise with something soft to protect the um, protect the fine threads here and I'm going to try and turn that a quarter turn out and see if anything changes. All right, so I thought I had record press this whole time, so I'm not sure what I missed, but um, what I ended up doing was I backed out that nut a half a turn and I put it back together and it didn't seem to make a difference, but then I realized that that rubber cup might be integral to the operation of this, so I put the rubber cup, that little rubber washer, the cup-shaped washer, I pushed that back into position, put it back together, and as I rotated it, it seemed like it was counting. The numbers weren't counting correctly because I didn't have them synchronized. Um, but I realized they seemed to be counting consistently. That's what was important. I had four of them that had the zeros in the right position. And those one, two, three, fours, every time I came around, they were going up one. So I realized that it now seemed to be counting correctly. So now what I've done is uh, I've backed off this nut far enough so that I can use a sharp small instrument to carefully flip those left hand wheels into synchronization and I made sure that I did it up near the top here so that I'm not trying to flip the numbers where the ramp is and again I back this nut off so now I'm going to now that I have these apparently all synchronized I'm going to carefully tighten this nut back down. Let's test it and see if it's counting. So if I turn this um, counterclockwise, which would be opening the micrometer, this is going to count up. So if I go uh, upwards, of course it's 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 40, and it is now working. How cool is that? And the max would be 99. All right. If I started at zero, this would be the 1.100 mark right here. So I would be at that first division on this scale. Capiche? Okay. So more importantly, what should happen is when I go in the other direction, this should count down from 99. I should be able to count all the way down to zero. All right, so far so good. So the only thing that's bothering me is that this is a lot stiffer now than it was. So I'm wondering if I should back that nut, turn that nut back in, um, maybe a quarter turn. All right, so I'm gonna play around with this and see if I can't find the sweet spot. At this point, um, I back the nut off, or I should say I tighten the nut back in and it's still counting properly, but I've still got some digits that are off because they moved. When, I, when I'm putting this in, they tend to want to move, some of them. But if we watch it count down now, if we ignore that 66, which is supposed to be an 86, which we'll fix in a moment. 85, 85. 43, 82, that should be 81, 80. 
But the important thing is that it is counting, with the exception of a few stray digits that are wrong. I think I've got it. It's counting now. It's working. Cool. Gonna need to glue that. <laughs> <laughs> 